Mike. You're on mute. And I'm on mute. Thank you again for uh, Kyle Green for that. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, just just wondered what you thought the biggest difference was in the third quarter uh, compared to the first half, and then how you're able to sustain that going through to the fourth as well. Uh, our attention to detail on the defensive end, um, executing our schemes, just executing our game plan, and uh, taking away some of their easy uh, easy points, some of the self inflicted um, um, damaging plays that we do to ourselves. Um, not turning the ball over and just making plays for each other. Uh, obviously shots falling helps everything getting steals, getting on transition, playing against uh, um, a non-set defense is, is uh, ideal. So we are able to come out with the right energy and, uh, and, and sustain it. And Wesley, just zooming out a little bit, thinking about the, when stars are out over your experience over these years and teams and guys have to do more, do you think that can lead to some mistakes? And is that part of what you think the situation has been with the turnovers these last couple of games? I mean, it's going to be growing pains. you got two of the best players in, in the game um, not that you're used to playing with, uh, no longer on the uh, available. So, yeah, everybody has to step up. Um, we're still going to get everybody's best shot. No one cares that AD and Braun aren't playing for us right now. Um, and we all got a job to do. And that's, and that's win ba- basketball games, that's compete. It's, it's finding a new niche for everybody. You know, we got to find a new way, not a new way, but adjust style of play, um, find out different ways to win. And it's going to come out with toughness. It's going to come to, with togetherness. And it's going to come with just fight and scrappiness. Okay. We are going to go to Kyle Goon, please. Hey, Wes. Um, we haven't talked to you since LeBron got injured. I'm just wondering what has been sort of the, the ride for for you and in the locker room just in the last week and um you know with with the losing streak and the trade deadline kind of coming around at the same time did it all feel a little piled together when it come comes to tension are you asking just me personally or like as a team yeah i mean you personally you know yeah i mean you you kind of went through it and, and i'm sure there's just a lot to the last week um I mean, obviously, when the, when Brown went down, it was uh, I think it rattled the whole NBA. You know, not just our team. Um, and uh, as far as trade deadlines and all that kind of stuff, I, I don't think there's been a season I've been in the NBA that I haven't heard my name possibly in the trade room or so. At this point in my career, uh, you just block that out and uh, you just take care of what you can take care of. Show up every day, leave everything on the court. And uh, just be there for your guys, be there for your team. And this is growing for us. You know, this is just only going to make us a scarier team when we get back healthy. You know, everybody's getting a new rhythm. Everybody's having an opportunity to showcase a little bit more, do a little bit more, gain a little bit more confidence. And then now um, when those guys come back in, you know, everybody else is just hitting on all cylinders. And uh, we got two of the best players in the world coming back. So, you know, right now we just got to hold the fort down. Continue to um, to fight, scrap, play together, uh, find ways to win, um, stay competitive, compete. You know, our goal is to win every game that we play still. So um, it doesn't change. Dan? Hey, Wes, I'm just curious from being a teammate, what's it like watching Trez with the ball in the paint? Um, and kind of how would you describe sort of his general attitude once he gets in the paint? When he gets in the paint? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, his attitude is what it's supposed to be. No one can stop me. And, um, you know, he's an animal down there. I still, I'm still surprised and amazed about how he can have the ball, like damn near on the floor and then two people around him and he just powers up and now he's swinging on the rim. You know, what he does, what he can bring is, uh, is, is extremely valuable to, to our team. You know, offensive rebounds is being a presence at that rim, making two people play the, uh, and, and he's trying to evolve his game. You know, he's looking for, for cutters, for shooters. He's reading situations. And again, like I said, that's just going to make us scarier. You know, we got guys that have to branch out their games a little bit more. And um, because obviously LeBron and AD, you know, they, they're such good facilitators. You know, LeBron's one of the best facilitators to ever play. You know, we all got to start doing it. And it's just going to make it that much, uh, make us more dangerous. Dave? West with LeBron and AD out. Is there a player or two that you feel like set the tone by how they, they play and maybe by what they say? I don't know if 
they're the one and the same. Um, but who's kind of been the one leading the way during this last week or so? It's been committee, truthfully. It's definitely been committee. I mean, everybody has a voice out here. Everybody has um, has knowledge. Everybody has, you know, something different to provide to this team. And that's what we need. You know, it, it's when you lose two superstars like that, megastars, whatever you want to call them, you know, it, it's, it's always a t- it's already a team game. It becomes more of a team game. You know, how can um, Dennis lift up this guy and how can Kuz lift up this guy and how, you know, everybody's got to lift somebody up along with carrying their own weight, you know, so it's a team of professionals, obviously um, team of champions and uh, you know, no, we, we've been losing, but we haven't hang, hung our heads. You know, we understand it's going to be pain, growing pains, but um, we put ourselves thankfully in a situation where we can endure growing pains and, uh, and learn from them and, and try to stack as many wins as we can. Bill? Hey, Wes, Frank said that um, during this stretch, you guys kind of collectively are going to need to raise the accountability level without LeBron and AD. I'm curious, how, how do you do that? What does that look like uh, in the locker room and, and on the court? I mean, it's communication. It's having tough skin. You know, it's not taking things personal. Uh, it's being accountable for yourself. Uh, you got to be a man, you know. You, you mess up, you got to say, yeah, I messed up. You know, no excuses. Uh this person, this person, this person. It was like, when you're supposed to be there, you're supposed to be there. And, and uh, you got to be able to to own that when you weren't there and then make sure that you make the necessary corrections um, with the next time down. And, you know, it's not like we're yelling and screaming at each other. You know, this this team, this organization, they do a great job of, you know, with film and, and learning through film. And um, and so that's, that's really what's been happening. And um, that's where you're able to see the second half. Couple more, Michael Duarte. Hey, Wes. Uh, last two nights, there's been about 50 scattered fans or guests on the opposite end of your bench. They've seemed to be quiet here for us, but I'm wondering if you've seen them or paid attention to them, and just how nice or exciting is it to, to see anybody in here other than us and staff? Um, truthfully, I'm locked into the game. <laughs> you know, I, I'm excited for hopefully you know the Staples Center getting opened all the way back up, uh, hearing the roar and all that stuff, but. Um, my focus is on the court, uh, always. Last one, Daniel Artes. Hey, what's up, Wes? Uh, Daniel Artes from the Daniel Artes podcast. Hope all is well. Um, speaking of Montrez, um, I want to act, I want your opinion on Montrez. Um, how much motivation has he um, been having since his performance in the bubble last year, you know, with the whole situation with uh, with Denver, you know, playing at the level that he's playing at this year right now while you're on the team with him? What have you seen in the difference in him? Truthfully, I haven't seen any other trends than this one. So, I mean, you might have to ask him that about what was going on in the bubble or, or reference to your question. But this is the trends I've always seen, always competed against, you know, animal, um, can attack everything on the glass uh, and trying to put everybody in the basket, play with a dog uh, motor mentality. And for you, um, how has your mindset changed now that LeBron and AD is out? You know, um, you know, of course, everybody's going to have a big target on your back. So everybody's coming after y'all. So how the mindset has changed, you know, um, regarding, you know, y'all playing, you know, trying to, you know, stay afloat um, during um, during the time your two star players is gone? I mean, my mindset, my mindset doesn't really change either. I want to kill every time I'm on the court. Um, I mean, I guess that's just the nature of how I was raised and, and, and the nature of which uh, I attacked the game of basketball, being undrafted and all that. Um, it was a matter of finding a rhythm. Um, obviously, it's difficult in a, in a pandemic when you can't get up extra shots and do all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the, the NBA season is crazy. It, it provides you with, with opportunities when you least expect it, and it's up for us to make up the most of them. And uh, um, that's what this whole team is doing, you know, not only just myself. Good there, Wes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Wesley.